Cavi assaulted and robbed at knife point. A 23-year-old woman has been indicted by a jury for forcibly copulating with and then robbing a male taxi driver at knife point. The crime happened back in January, when three people called a cab service and asked for pickup at a hotel in Finley, Ohio. During the ride, one man pulled out a knife and held it to the driver's throat. His female companion then forced herself on the cabbie, threatening him to get him to submit. Once the deed was done, the two criminals took $32 from the traumatized driver's pocket and fled the scene. The woman was arrested on a warrant after the victim reported the incident to police. One accomplice is still at large, while the third person with them is yet to be charged. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Quite a number of men have been victimized by forceful procreation practitioners. Society and YouTube just don't like talking about it. Seattle woman accused of raping man as he slept. This Seattle woman is facing second-degree rape charges for allegedly assaulting a man in his bedroom while he slept. According to police, Shante Gilman was 26 years old at the time of the assault in June last year. The unidentified male had been attending a neighbor's birthday party and only knew Gilman as a drug user from the area. He later went home and fell asleep. <laughs> At about 2 a.m., he woke up to find the 240-pound woman on top of him. She was pinning his arms down and his erect penis was inside her. But he managed to escape and push her out of his apartment. A recently completed DNA test tied Gilman to the rape and she has now been charged. The mother of four has a history of substance abuse and told police she suffered from mental illness. A Facebook status update in August said she was 31 weeks pregnant and just eight weeks sober. Boy claims he was raped by Airbnb hostess in Spain. A 19-year-old boy was sexually assaulted by his Airbnb hostess in Spain while his mother back home sat in horror reading his texts, her pleas for help brushed aside by the company. After a great experience with Airbnb during his travels in Brazil, Jacob Lopez decided he'd travel again and decided to go to Spain. Jacob came across a host in Madrid who had great reviews and ratings on Airbnb. Confident with his choice, he booked the room. Upon meeting his host in Madrid on July 4th, he learned she is a trans woman, and they got to know each other on the way to the apartment. At the apartment, the hostess tried to kiss Jacob, much to his surprise. When he refused, she threatened to kick him out of the house without his belongings. Jacob agreed to leave but was pushed inside the bedroom. The hostess bolted the doors and demanded that he submit to sexual acts. Luckily, Jacob's cell phone was with him. To avoid being heard, he frantically texted his now-worried mother back in Massachusetts. Unfortunately, the hostess got smart and unplugged the Wi-Fi. She then rattled knives in the kitchen to break Jacob's spirit as she coaxed him to submit. The mother begged Airbnb to help, but the agent refused to give out the hostess's address and told her to call the police in Spain herself. Frantic, the poor mother struggled to communicate with authorities in Spain. When she tried to call Airbnb again, her calls went straight to voicemail. Left with no other choice, Jacob gave in. At one point, he contemplated killing the hostess, but changed his mind when he thought about the repercussions. Jacob made up a story that he had plans with friends nearby who would call the cops if he didn't show up. This convinced the hostess to let him go. When police questioned the hostess, she denied Jacob's claims. She said that Jacob is transphobic and that the sex was consensual at the time. According to the New York Times, their interview with Jacob matched all the details in the police report. Madrid police declined to comment on the investigation. Jacob's horrifying experience made Airbnb change their policies and now say their team will always contact law enforcement if there is an emergency. Jacob's family asks all Airbnb travelers to always share their host's address with friends and family, apply for international roaming, and look out for strange contraptions on the door. Royal Navy sailors anally rape colleague with beer bottle. An unnamed Royal Navy sailor was raped by his colleagues on board the HMS Northumberland while it was docked at Bournemouth, Dorset. The victim had gone drinking with a group of sailors and had gotten trashed. He passed out in the seating area on board the HMS Northumberland. He said he awoke to the pain of something being pressed into his anus and also realized another man was slapping him in the face with the man's meat stick. Not only did the incident occur, but the accused perpetrators, Andrew Donaldson, age 34, and Christopher Cook, age 31, 
videoed themselves and took photos as they violated their unconscious victim. Donaldson and Cook are both being court-martialed for disgraceful conduct of an indecent kind, and both have denied the charges and refused to comment. Unfortunately, there's that pesky video, and all those photos, and the fact that Donaldson emailed a copy of the video to himself and shared it with several other crew members. Donaldson said he only shoved the Heineken bottle into his victim's anus for the amusement of others, and said it was in no way sexual. In our opinion, only a pretty sick individual would describe anal rape with an object as amusing. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Madam Mayhem peaks interest 39 years after sex scandal. It's been six years since a documentary about her exploits was released, eight years since she last made major headlines, and going on 39 years since she committed the crime that cemented her name in history in a sex scandal that captivated Britain and America. Yet Joyce McKinney's life and story still commands worldwide interest. Madame Mayhem, as she has more recently been coined, was the center of a 1970s court case known to many as the Mormon in Chains sex case. Her story was documented in a 1978 novel titled Joyce McKinney and the Manacled Mormon by Anthony Delano, who covered the case, and in a documentary aptly called Tabloid by filmmaker Errol Morris, which centered around the media frenzy that followed. She was an all-American girl, Born in August of 1949 in North Carolina, McKinney entered beauty pageants and was described as brilliantly intelligent. She was crowned Miss Wyoming in 1973. Around the same time, she moved to Utah and joined the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or Mormons. It was there that McKinney met then 19-year-old Kirk Anderson, a Mormon, in Salt Lake City in the summer of 1979. McKinney fell madly in love. Anderson was described as six foot three, around 300 pounds, and not very athletic. The two had a short love affair. Afterwards, McKinney said Anderson had vanished. She told the Sunday Times, Mormon elders who did not trust me sent him away. But according to various media reports, Anderson had consulted his bishop, who assigned him to missions in England to escape the love-stricken woman. McKinney moved to Los Angeles and in February 1977 hired a private investigator to find her long-lost love. When the investigator tracked Anderson down, McKinney, with the help of her devoted friend Keith May, traveled to England. After locating Anderson, May posed as a potential Mormon convert and booked an appointment with the soon-to-be victim. All parties agreed with this point in the story. According to Anderson's version, he was taken at gunpoint into a car where McKinney was waiting disguised in a wig. McKinney and May then kidnapped Anderson and took him to a cottage in Devon. On the third night of his captivity, Anderson told the court that McKinney had sex with him against his will. Anderson said, I was manacled to the bed. She came into the room wearing a negligee and put on some music. And only after promising to marry McKinney did his kidnappers set him free but McKinney said he went willingly. In her version, the three went to the cottage in Devon, where McKinney said she enticed Anderson with food and back rubs, but said the man was impotent. So she tied him up to arouse him. Afterwards, McKinney said Anderson wanted to seal the deal and marry her, and had volunteered to tell everyone about the misunderstanding, then left. Later, on September 19, 1977, Anderson had arranged a meeting with McKinney, which she believed to be their wedding day. Instead, McKinney and May were arrested and route to the meeting point. The press had a field day. McKinney was freed on bail while she awaited trial. During that time, she lived the life of a celebrity. McKinney was seen at clubs with the likes of John Travolta and Keith Richards. She was even invited by a journalist from the Daily Express to the premiere of The Stud, starring Joan Collins, whom she reportedly upstaged on the red carpet. Then, it was as if overnight, McKinney vanished. She and May had fled England to America, posing as deaf mutes. No extradition proceedings were instituted by Britain, and an English court sentenced McKinney in absentia to a year in jail. While back in the States, McKinney said she was working on a book about her life and sold her story to the Daily Express, telling the tale of a broken-hearted woman. But her ex-boyfriend outed her to the Daily Mirror, revealing that she had been an escort. The world ate it up. She was arrested again in 1984, when police found her stalking Kirk at his place of work in a Utah airport. Years later, McKinney would make headlines again for cloning her dog and suing tabloid documentary director Errol Morris. 
While she never did write the book of her life, as long as Joyce McKinney lives and breathes, she may never be forgotten, because she won't let us.